we have been discussing spin echo as an example and trying to calculate explicitly the density operator revolution through the pulse sequence. So, we did that last time for a particular case of two spins with coupling and without coupling, without coupling first and then with coupling later and we are considered the spin echo sequence which was 90 degree x pulse followed by time tau then a 180 degree x pulse followed by time tau and then the evolution was cal calculated until this point. So, we are now going to make a slight variation in this in this sequence to see what difference does it make whether the phase of the RF pulse does it make a difference and if it does in what way does it make a difference. So, that is a question we are going to ask and therefore, we will simply change the phase of this pulse instead of a 180 degree x pulse we will apply the pulse along the y axis and see what happens. So, as before we will first consider two spins without coupling which means the Hamiltonian is simply h z which is the Zeeman Hamiltonian. The evolution happens in the same manner here under the influence of the Zeeman Hamiltonian. Okay. Now, we have calculated explicitly the density operator in the previous case and the difference here is only at this point. So, up till here the calculation is the same therefore, we will not repeat that calculation here, but simply take what was the density operator from the previous class at this point and that is rho 3, rho 3 is minus i k y minus inside bracket i k y cosine omega k tau minus i k x sine omega k tau and then we have minus i l y cosine omega i l tau minus i l x sin omega l tau. This was the result of chemical shift evolution from rho 2 to rho 3. Okay. So, and then the individual frequencies are here the omega k and omega l for the two spins. Now, the difference comes we are now applying a pulse along the y axis and not along the x axis. So, what does it do? So, if it is along the y axis this term does not change this is invariant. So, this remains as i k y whereas, this one goes from i k x to minus i k x and therefore, this becomes plus here. So, this becomes plus i k x sin omega k tau similarly minus this i l y cosine omega l tau and this becomes plus. So, plus i l x sin omega l tau. Now, put this again explicitly you have it minus i k y cosine omega k tau and minus i k x sin omega k tau and similarly here minus i l y cosine omega l tau minus i l x sin omega l tau. This is at time point 4. Next we have to evolve under chemical shift once more for the next tau period. Now, there are 4 terms and each one of these has to be explicitly evolved. So, this is the first term i k y. So, this gives me here minus cosine omega k tau and i k y evolves as under the chemical shift once more like this i k y cosine omega k tau minus i k x sin omega k tau. And the second term which involved i k x will give me this minus sin omega k tau and inside bracket you have i k x cosine omega k tau plus i k y sin omega k tau. Similarly, for the L spin you have the same two type of terms minus cosine omega L tau multiplying i l y cosine omega L tau minus i l x sin omega L tau for the first term and the second one here is minus sin omega L tau i l x cosine omega L tau plus i l y sin omega L tau. Now, we notice what happens here. So, rearrange the terms this is minus cosine omega cosine square omega k tau okay. and, uh, and then we have the other i k y term is here and this is minus sin square omega k tau i k y if you put i k y take i k y take minus i k y inside bracket you will have cosine square omega k tau plus sin square omega k tau and so therefore, what is in the bracket is 
is 1 and therefore you get a minus i k y. And what happens to this term? So, this is plus i k x sin omega k tau cosine omega k tau and here it is minus sin omega k tau cosine omega k tau this will cancel. So, from these two we retain only this, this part and now similarly if you see here we retain this part, these two terms will be remaining this is cosine square omega l tau i l y and this is sin square omega l tau into i l y and therefore these two terms will remain and we get i l y here and these two terms will cancel and we therefore in the end for rho phi I get minus inside bracket i k y plus i l y. This is exactly equal to rho 2 right. So, therefore, what has happened if you recall here yes, let us see what uh, rho 2 in the previous class minus i k y plus i l y this is what we started off with ok. Now, in the previous class at rho phi we had here plus sign it became rho phi is equal to plus i k y plus i l y. So, the effect of changing the phase of the 180 degree pulse is that this sign has changed and it has remained as rho 2 which is minus i k y plus i l y. The chemical shift is completely refocused that effect is the same there is no change in that one except that we have a change the sign has now become minus instead of the plus in that case. This also we had seen in a vectorial picture when we discussed the spin echo earlier. So, this provides a mathematical rationale as to what is happening in the sequence ok. Now, let us consider the next case where you have two spins with coupling j k l. Now, we have h z plus h j this is the Hamiltonian now. Now, we have seen before that the chemical shift is completely refocused at time point 5. So, therefore, we need not to calculate the chemical shift evolution once more here because you, you remember we said uh, evolution under h z and h j can be calculated independently. It does not matter which one we calculate first, which one we calculate second, it does not matter at all. Now, we assume that we have already calculated the chemical shift evolution under the chemical shift the influence of the Zeeman Hamiltonian therefore, we do not need to calculate that once more. We straight away take that result here the rho phi was minus uh, i k y plus minus uh, minus inside bracket i k y plus i l y. Therefore, we start from there and now we calculate the evolution under the coupling Hamiltonian. So, this is the first term there gives me minus inside bracket i k y cosine 2 pi j k l tau. Why do we take 2 pi j k l tau now? Because I am evolving for the whole time period 2 tau. So, I did, I did not evolve under the coupling before therefore, I am now evolving for the whole period 2 tau. Therefore, I get here cosine 2 pi j k l tau minus 2 i k x i l z sin 2 pi j k l tau. Similarly, the L frequency gives me i l y cosine 2 pi j k l tau minus 2 i l x i k z sin 2 pi j k l tau. Here notice the difference is here you have i k s i l z here you have i l x i k z. So, therefore, that was uh, the simplest case we could calculate the evolution under the coupling in a simplified manner. We do not need to calculate the coupling the chemical shift evolution once more we can assume that we have, we have already calculated and we simply calculate the evolution under the coupling. The 180 pulse is applied to both the spins. Now, we consider the next case which is case 2 here the 180 degree pulse is applied only to the L spin notice the pulse sequence here we have the L spin channel here and here is the K spin well this is also this is the K spin however this is the hard pulse which may be applied to both the channels. But to the L spin we apply only the 180 degree pulse though uh, if you consider this as applying only to the K spin then of course we have this but if we are applying a the first pulse to both the spins then we will of course also will have a 90 degree pulse here when we say 180 pulse is applied only exclusively to this. So, we could in principle say that uh, in this calculation we have calculated it assuming that we have applied a one and the initial 90 degree pulse to both the spins. So, we can add that here 
that so the first 90 degree pulse is applied to both the spins therefore both are excited and then we have the evolution going on under the influence of the coupling Hamiltonian. We could have done this experiment this way as well in which case of course we apply the pulse only to the K spin we need not calculate the evolution of the L spin magnetization here because the L spin magnetization does not exist here. So, if you have this pulse also then we have generated both then we can have the evolution of the L spin as well going on. So, the therefore both are uh, correct in you can choose whichever way you want to do it. So, here we have considered both the spins and therefore we have said the rho 2 is minus i k y plus i l y. The first 90 degree pulse is applied to both the spins and on k and l therefore we have this one now. Now what is rho 3? The rho 3 is minus the evolution now under the chemical shift. So, minus i k y cosine omega k tau minus i k x sin omega k tau this is the k spin evolution and the L spin evolution gives me minus I L y cosine omega L tau minus I L x sin omega L tau. So, put it expand it and rearrange it properly and we have rho 3 is minus I k y cosine omega k tau plus I k x sin omega k tau and likewise minus I L y cosine omega L tau plus I L x sin omega L tau. So, then now you see here there are 4 terms right this row 3 has 4 terms now each one of them we will have to evolve under the coupling. So, therefore, row 3 prime will now evolve under the coupling to row 3 prime gives the result after the coupling evolution. So, the first term here gives you this coefficient remains the same. So, we have here i k y cosine pi j k l tau minus 2 i k x i l z sin pi j k l tau. The second term gives me this coefficient is the same sin omega k tau we have i k x cosine pi j k l tau plus 2 i k y i l z sin pi j k l tau. The third term gives you minus cosine omega l tau plus i l y cosine pi j k l tau minus 2 i l x i k z sin pi j k l tau and the fourth term gives you plus sin omega l tau i l x cosine pi j k l tau plus 2 i l y i k z sin pi j k l tau ok. So, therefore, the result is now we have a total of 8 terms here. Let us rewrite this in a uh, making some rearrangements. So, the rho 4 is now after a 180 degree x pulse now that is after the on the L spin only ok. So, rho 3 prime was after the chemical after the coupling evolution 8 terms are there and now we apply 180 degree x pulse only on L. So, therefore, what happens there is no pulse applied here. So, this remains the same this term remains the same and here again i k x nothing happens to k spin but the L spin 180 degree pulse is applied. So, therefore, this i L z goes to minus i L z and therefore, this becomes plus here. So, this gives you 2 i k x i l z sin pi j k l tau that remains this. So, we put it in a different color for that reason. Now, once again here nothing happens to this term and, and in on this term i l z goes to minus i l z and therefore, this gives me a minus sign here minus 2 i k y i l z. The third term now this one i l y goes to minus i l y because this is the x pulse therefore, i l y goes to minus i l y. So, this is again in a different color and whereas this one it is invariant L x is invariant therefore, nothing happens to this term this remains as minus 2 i L x i k z sin y j k l tau. And in the fourth term this this is i L x here since this is the x pulse this will be invariant nothing happens to this whereas this one the L y goes to minus i L y and therefore, you get a minus sign here you get minus 2 i L y i k z sin pi j k l tau. Now, therefore, you rewrite this as 8 different terms right we have now 8 terms here ok each one of them you expand it you have 8 terms. Now, what we do each one of those 8 terms you hold we have to evolve under the j coupling because the j coupling is present during the next tau period. 
So those each one of those we now evolve. So this is the first term from there. You get cosine omega k tau, cosine pi j k l tau, and i k y evolves as i k y cosine pi j k l tau minus 2 i k x i l z sin pi j k l tau, and the second term gives me minus sin pi j k l tau cosine omega k tau, and this is the operator which we are evolving, and that gives me 2 i k x i l z cosine of pi j k l tau plus i k y sin pi j k l tau. In these cases, you should remember that summary of the evolutions which I had given earlier because it is all what I am using here. Those summary equations which are there for the evolution under the coupling and evolution under the chemical shift is what is being used. The third term gives you sin omega k tau cosine pi j k l tau and it is the kx part which is evolving i k x cosine pi j k l tau plus 2 i k y i l z sin pi j k l tau. And the fourth term likewise gives me minus sin pi j k l tau sin omega k tau and inside here is 2 i k y i l z cosine pi j k l tau and you get a minus sign here minus i k x sin pi j k l tau. So similarly the fifth term is cosine omega l tau cosine pi j k l tau i l y cosine pi j k l tau minus 2 i l x i k z sin pi j k l tau. The sixth term gives me sin pi j k l tau cosine omega l tau then inside bracket you have 2 i l x i k z cosine pi j k l tau plus i l y sin pi j k l tau. The seventh term gives me sin omega l tau cosine pi j k l tau and inside the bracket you have now i l x cosine pi j k l tau plus 2 i l y i k z sin pi j k l tau. And finally the last term gives you minus sin pi j k l tau sin omega l tau and inside bracket you have 2 i l y i k z cosine pi j k l tau minus i l x sin pi j k l tau. This is at the end of j evolution from the after the 180 degree pulse. So this is at just before the spin echo at the time of the spin echo. Now let us rearrange this and look at these terms which actually tend to cancel. Now we notice here that earlier which I put it all in cyan color and now I put the same in the in red color and say these terms cancel. Okay, this cancels with this. So you have here plus okay, and here it is a minus and therefore this term cancels, this remains and similarly here this term cancels with this term. 2 i k y i l z term cancels with this 2 i k y i l z term. The coefficients are here you have the plus sin omega k tau cosine pi j k l tau and sin pi j k l tau. So it is the same coefficients here with a minus sign and therefore this cancels with this. Similarly this term cancels with this term and this term cancels with this term. So now therefore half of the terms are cancelled. So let us pull together the other terms and you have now the rho 5 is equal to minus cosine omega k tau cosine pi j k l tau i k y cosine pi j k l tau and minus sin pi j k l tau cosine omega k tau i k y sin pi j k l tau plus sin omega k tau cosine pi j k l tau i k x pi cosine pi j k l tau and minus sin pi j k l tau sin omega k tau minus i k x sin pi j k l tau plus cosine omega l tau cosine pi j k l tau i l y cosine pi j k l tau plus sin pi j k l tau cosine omega l tau and here i l y sin pi j k l tau plus sin omega l tau cosine pi j k l tau i l x cosine pi j k l tau and finally minus sin pi j k l tau sin omega l tau and inside bracket minus i l x sin pi j k l tau. So therefore now you see we have the operator terms are either i k y i k x or i l y i l x and then we have the various coefficients for those. So now we pull together all those which belong to particular operators and then you get this. So here what we have is the coefficients of i k y. So i k y is this operator which was there and we pull together those terms which have i k y. So here we have then minus cosine omega k tau i k y and inside bracket we get 
cosine square pi j k L tau plus sin square pi j k L tau. Similarly for i k x here you have the coefficient sin omega k tau and inside the bracket here cosine, pi, cosine square pi j k L tau plus sin square pi j k L tau. Similarly for i l y here you have cosine omega L tau and inside bracket here you have cosine square pi j k L tau plus sin square pi j k L tau. And then for i l x you have the sin omega L tau and inside bracket here you have cosine square pi j k L tau plus sin square pi j k L tau. Now notice everything that is present inside the bracket is all 1 therefore it simply is, a, has, is simply equal to 1 therefore I only have these terms remaining right. So cosine omega k tau i k y plus sin omega k tau i k x plus cosine omega l tau i l y plus sin omega l tau i l x. Now where is the coupling therefore the coupling is all vanished right. All the terms which contain the coupling information have vanished. So they have therefore we say the J coupling evolution is refocused. In other words this is called as spin decoupling. So if I apply a 180 degree pulse only on one of the spins then it results in spin decoupling okay. So we can do this calculation for evolution for with uh, 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 the initial 90 degree pulse applied to uh, one spin only then also we can do the same calculation okay. But we have since we have included both it is actually more general. Now we notice one thing in the previous case we after the row 4 that is after this point we calculated the J evolution. So we switch the order of the evolutions earlier we had we were calculating the chemical shift evolution first and then the J evolution. Now we have done the J evolution and then we are going to do chemical shift evolution now. So after this term we will now do chemical shift evolution because here I am demonstrating to you that you can actually switch the order of chemical shift evolution and coupling evolution and that is what we have done here. So now after the rho phi I now calculate the chemical shift evolution. Chemical shift evolution gives me therefore cosine omega k tau here i k y cosine omega k tau minus i k x sin omega k tau. The second term gives me sin omega k tau i k x cosine omega k tau plus i k y sin omega k tau cosine omega l tau i l y cosine omega k tau minus i l x sin omega k tau and finally sin omega l tau and here inside i l x cosine omega k tau plus i l y sin omega k tau. So this is for the last tau period this is after the 180 degree pulse we evolve for the uh, next tau period under the influence of the chemical shift evolution. So now you see what happens you look at the terms once more rho phi prime this part we leave it as it is but notice here there is a cancellation. So this term can this is cosine omega l tau sin omega l tau i l x this is plus sign here and a minus sign here and this is sin omega l tau cosine omega l tau this is the plus sign here and these two terms will cancel. Because this is the chemical shift evolution of the L spin therefore the L spin must have the omega L as the evolution okay. And then we can see that these terms will cancel and what will happen to this? This is cosine omega L square omega square L tau. So what do you get? I k y minus I k y cosine square omega k tau that is this and this minus sign is multiplying everywhere right. So I k y cosine omega square tau minus I k x sin omega plus sin omega k tau I k x cosine omega k tau plus I k y sin omega k tau therefore this is the plus sign this is the minus sign here I pull this together I take minus i k y inside bracket I have cosine square omega k tau minus sin square omega k tau and then you have this one here this i k x sin omega k tau okay and cosine omega k tau and this is sin omega k tau cosine omega k tau these both have the same sign this is minus minus plus and this is also plus so therefore this gives me i k x sin 2 omega k tau okay. So similarly here the 
uh, what we have here cosine I, I L y cosine omega, cosine square omega L tau and uh, and this is I L y sine square omega L tau okay because this is omega L tau here and now inside bracket therefore you will get cosine square omega L tau plus sine square omega L tau that is 1 and therefore I simply written this as I L y. So therefore your rho phi prime is minus I k y cosine square omega k tau minus sine square omega k tau plus I k x sine omega k sine 2 omega k tau plus I L y. So this is substantially simplified. Now what you have here? This is cosine 2 omega k tau therefore I have here minus I k y cosine 2 omega k tau plus I k x sin 2 omega k tau. So the k spin has evolved under the chemical shift whereas the L spin chemical shift also is refocused. You do not see any term remaining here which contains omega L. Therefore, omega, when I apply a 180 degree pulse only on the L spin, the L spin chemical shift is refocused but the K spin chemical shift continues to evolve for the whole period to tau. Therefore, I have here starting from my I k y it was minus I k y therefore, I have the inside minus I k y cos omega 2 omega k tau plus I k x sin 2 omega k tau. So, L chemical shift is refocused whereas K spin chemical shift has evolved. So, therefore, to in summary we have seen the different ways of dealing with the uh, spin echo we had done explicit calculation uh, under different conditions when the in the spin echo the 180 degree pulse is applied along the x or the y axis what happens when there is only chemical shift evolution when uh, what happens when the 180 pulse is applied um, on only one spin that leads to spin decoupling okay this is the common technique which is used in all multiples experiments for uh, decoupling during the course of the pulse sequence particularly in along the indirection indirect detection periods in multidimensional NMR spectra. This we will discuss in greater detail but we have demonstrated here the general principle as to how these things are uh, working and explicitly shown by density operator calculation the various terms that you hold under the influence of the different Hamiltonians.